So here we have our uh, monster liner kit right here. This is what I'm going to be using to um, coat the uh, the interior, all the floor pans and all that good stuff. So we got a couple things here. If you notice in the back, this is the uh, the tintable monster liner right here. This is the main product. This is seven eighths uh, of a gallon of their stuff. And then here is their uh, their catalyst. So you mix the catalyst with the uh, the main product to get it all to actually harden and dry. Uh, here's the Mazda shades. I got pyroclastic and that gets mixed into that for color. And then over here is a chassis saver which is a neat little product that they have. This is the uh, the silver aluminum version um, and it just you know covers up all the rust and everything I guess I don't know if it has any converting properties but it seals it up and helps it not rust anymore. It's got uh, like uh, aluminum particles in there that actually prevent any moisture from reacting to it. This will help cover up the rust and protect it from rusting out more. Uh, the kit comes with two of these foam brushes right here, the foam rollers, and all this good stuff back here. So you have your your main rolling roller right here. Uh, you got your mixing paddle. You get a two inch polyester uh, paintbrush and uh, two paint mixers and um, some kind of foam or something, a Brillo pad I guess for scuffing out the surface or something, so that's cool. Uh, I ordered their two, uh, two inch mini roller kit because I figured, you know, in case I, I need some more rollers or if it breaks apart or if I have small areas to get to, this would be fine and, you know, for four bucks, why not? You know, I'd rather have more and not use it than actually need it and not be able to get it when I need it. Um, because once you mix that catalyst in, you got about 10 hours, I think, until uh, everything hardens up, so you better be ready. So anyway, enough talking. That's the whole Monster Liner kit right there. Okay, so, day two. Everything's looking pretty good. Now it's time to scuff. So I'm using the included scuff pad that they gave me, and uh, I cut it in half just so it's a little easier to work with. Just gonna give it a quick skiff. Okay, so everything was sanded, wiped down with MEK. So it's got some nice scratches on the surface. Um, if you care about your bolt holes at all, put uh, crumpled newspaper into them or uh, earplugs. Earplugs also work pretty well. But I just did the rear seat uh, holes. I also did this bolt here, just since it's not in there. Uh, everything else is big enough that it shouldn't be an issue. So, um, yeah, I think it's time that we start mixing up our stuff. So, instructions say to uh, shake all the cans for, I think, at least 30 seconds, and I'll check the other um, instructions for mixing. But, get yourself a drill, put on your power mixer. So, this is pretty simple. Uh, they're telling you first take your uh, your color, put it into the uh, the monster liner, and then with the empty can, take a little bit of MEK, splash it around in there, and dump that in there just to get the uh, last little bit of color out. Then after that, they're telling you to put it all in a bucket and mix it up. I don't really want to use a bucket, so I'm going to see what happens if I just try to dump it all into the uh, one gallon and see uh, if it overflows or whatever. Okay, so this is what we're looking at here. This is the uh, coatable tinty stuff. That's the actual color, and that's the catalyst back there. Now, um, on the lid, they very, very clearly state that um, it ain't gonna fit. So they're saying to mix this up for two minutes, dump the shades in, mix it for another minute, and do that MEK stuff but we can't add the catalyst, it won't fit. So what I'm gonna do is try and pour some of this mixed stuff out into a cup, and then put the catalyst in there, and then uh, I'll dump the cup back in after I do a, a little bit. So I'm gonna try that, because I don't feel like dicking around with a bucket. Oh, 
back. Now you scrape the sides down. Make sure you get off the all this shit off the side. Don't forget the bottom too. Also, there's a there was a good amount on the lid, so try and scrap scrape the uh, stuff off the lid. Now the fun part: adding some color. So I'll try and get some of that in there. Okay. So for all the shit in the bottom, you just take a little bit of MEK over there. Put it in there, put the can on loosely, shake it up, dump it in there, and then we'll start mixing. Yeah, make sure to drape this on some newspaper, you're going to lose a little bit on the ground. Okay, so that's nice and mixed up. I stopped halfway through, scra scraped off all the stuff on the side, mixed it up some more. I dumped some of it into here, because I got three of these, so I'll make use of them all. Now, time to make the magic happen. You want to make sure you get as much of this crap out as you can. You're gonna want it all. I want it all. Stuff's actually really thin. But even as I've seen, usually it's uh, real fucking thick and it's a whole bunch in there. I'll see if I can scrape the last little bit out of there. Okay, so, took the can, dumped it in there, took the, uh, that stuff, put it in there, mixed that up real good. So, now that's ready to go, this is ready to go. So, let's start monster lining. So what they recommend, you're gonna take a little down there brush right here all, and dip it on, dunk it in there, and get all the hard to reach areas. If you did chassis saver or any paint beforehand, it's a little easier to imagine uh, because you already did it once. So like corners like this, stuff like that, all the little edges, get that with the brush. They recommend dabbing it instead of uh, painting because this stuff is thick. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what it looked like. Nice little dunkaroo. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Dunk it in there. It's a little thick, so... I feel like the how-to basic guy putting this stuff on. That doesn't sound like an egg to you. I kind of fucked up doing this part first. 
So I started the edges and for some reason I decided to do that. So it's going to be a little harder to get over there so I might have to go through the doors now. But, just to give y'all a little idea, I might have to do this two-handed. It's pretty thick. Never said I was a pro painter, so, you know, don't come here for paint tips. Time lapse time. So, now the fun part. Take your roller and roll it all on. You want to load that thing up as much as you can and just keep pushing it around. Um, you want it to be on there pretty thick and then push it around with the roller. Take the, um, the paintbrush and get all the hard to reach areas. If you noticed, um, I grabbed some newspaper. I forgot a couple holes. But um, usually I'll take the, uh, the roller and roll all the areas that I can and then uh, try and get the paintbrush in there for parts I didn't miss. Like if you notice right there, the seat bracket uh, studs, I used the brush around them and then took the paintbrush and very carefully got around it. You don't want the studs to get any of this stuff on there because then it won't go back on. So, you know, make sure you have some ventilation and uh, maybe wear a mask. There you have it. Check that out. So, it's all done. Use the paintbrush to get all the corners. Use the foam rollers to get all the rest. With the ribs, I'd go down them on angles and maybe back and forth and however I needed. But uh, the paintbrush really helps you out in spots that you can't get to or you need a little more accuracy with. But I tell you what, this thing looks fucking gorgeous. I'm very pleased with how this is looking so far. Um, no, I gotta clean them up a little. Uh, something else beneficial would be to put some tape around your uh, seat bolt studs or any other studs you don't want uh, getting shit on. Because if you look the way that that's coated, you can't even see the um, threads. So I'll have to clean that up real quick. But uh, putting tape on that would be very beneficial. Also tape lines if you need them. Uh, the way that I'm coating mine though, uh, the trim pieces cover everything. So I don't care about pretty lines. But uh, this is awesome. Very nice. I think I used a little more than uh, half the uh, the can. So it's it's somewhere about like here now. So what, what you do with the second coat, the first coat, you want to get everything coated. You want everything covered. The second coat, you're basically just using up the extra. So you, you let this uh, tack up for a couple hours. Uh, the Monster Shades tacks up faster than the regular black for some reason. So, in anywhere from two to four hours, probably closer to the three or four hour mark since it's colder out. Um, this will be ready for the second coat. In the second coat, you want to put all the extra down on the floor. All the, all the stuff that's going to get all the extra traffic and the surface, you want all that extra build up. So I'm going to get the back done, I'm going to get the floors, and I want to get the trans tunnel just because this might act like a little bit of a sound deadener. So I'm going to see if uh, I can get a little bit more on the... Um, the trans tunnel as well, just to uh, keep this quiet. I took some before sound decibel readings, and I'll compare, I'll compare them uh, afterwards when the interior is back in. So I'll let you know uh, how much quieter this stuff makes my truck. So that's it for now. We'll let it dry and we'll come back. Okay, so this is four hours later. If you'll notice, it's thicker, but still completely usable. All right. Okay, so I recoated all the floors. Got the back done with a nice coat. And I got the front part nice. I got this little hump. Basically anywhere that you're actually gonna see, because all this is under a seat, all that's under a console. 
so uh, yeah. Now we play the waiting game. I don't remember exactly how long we wait, but um, after I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, you let it tack up a little. You roll over it one more time, and that gives it the final texture. That's important. If you don't do that, it'll be real smooth. Unless you want smooth, then that's perfectly fine. But if you want more of a texture, you roll over it once it's a little tacky and it keeps it raised up. So, now we wait. Hard to tell the difference, but you know, let's give it a little more texture so it's not flat. You want to give it some nice firm pressure, be very smooth. Also, try and only roll in one direction, it helps a lot. So there you have it. That's about the uh, final texture we got there. A lot of people like to describe it as like an orange peel. So, there you go. Check that shit out. It's hard to see, but uh, now you let it sit anywhere from uh, 8 to 12 hours and then come back and uh, just take like a little water bottle with some, you know, water and just mist over it real quick. You just want a nice little misting, a little layer over top and that helps it cure because this is a moisture cure. Um, after that, uh, you know, 24 to 48 hours, it'll be dry-ish, it'll be ready for light use. But uh, after about a day, I'm going to wheel this outside and let it dry. It fully cures in a week, so I might not put anything in until closer to the week mark. Also, these brackets over here that sit in the back, I made sure to paint them. I also got these things in chassis savers, so it'll be a nice comparison, silver to black. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to come, come back and uh, miss this. And uh, afterwards, I'll probably compare the color chips to this and show you what the different colors might actually look like. But, uh, yeah, thanks for following along. This has been awesome. I like Monster Lina. I like Chassis Saver. And so far, I've enjoyed it. So. Um, don't forget about your, uh, your newspaper. This is the perfect time to take all these out. Because once this stuff hardens, it's not going to be easy to get that out. So, make sure to take all your little boogers out. That way you can actually put your bolts back in. Okay, so, it's very dark in here. Sorry about that. But, uh, now you just give it a nice little squirt. So just go around and do all that, and it'll be ready to dry. So there you go. You have a uh, complete uh, Monster Liner install. Next video, I'll probably go over uh, putting in the interior and comparisons and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching.